As a 3D artist, you are probably hyped for the next version of your favorite 3D software, like Blender, Max, Maya, Cinema 4D, or Houdini. But if you actually think about it, it is probably not a great idea to start using it right away. And this is exactly what VFX and game development studios do all the time, especially when working on big projects. You know, like big VFX movies, TV shows, or AAA video games. They almost never touch the newest and the hottest version of their 3D software as it comes out. This seems counterintuitive, because they want the latest features and the best tools. Or do they? Let's start with the elephant in the room. Going for the new version of Max or Maya, for example, is to put it bluntly, basically beta testing for Autodesk because it may cause some unforeseen issues. You see, large productions are not morons. They know their shit very well. And the last thing they want to have is a problem with the software, which can send everything south. VFX and game development studios will suffer many issues and work themselves to death to get a project out to see the light of day. Now, imagine additional problems caused because of the software. Even if you are not familiar with how studios work, I can tell you that the introduction of new version of any 3D software is almost always accompanied by the inherent risks of undiscovered bugs, in addition to unforeseen incompatibilities. If you ask someone in the industry, they will let you know how things really work. However, on the other hand, in a smaller setting like indie game development studios or small VFX shops, such issues might cause minor disruptions or easily manageable challenges. However, when you look at a big company, even a minor software glitch can escalate into hours or days of last work, multiplying costs and delaying projects timelines. And this is the last thing you want if you are in charge. I would also add, older versions of 3D software, having been in the market for a while, have generally undergone rigorous real-world testing by a vast user base. Now, imagine tens of thousands of 3D artists around the world reporting on bugs and stuff. This continuous usage and feedback loop allows software developers like Autodesk or SideFX to release patches and fixes, ironing out any major issues over time. But believe it or not, this is not even the most significant reason. There are even other major problems with upgrading to a newer version of a 3D software. This might not occur to you, but it is common for big productions. For example, some old and long-running shows or video game projects require using the same version for the sake of keeping everything working properly from render engines, 3D assets, animations, and so on. Such projects can span over several years, from inception to final delivery. And from what I can see, over these lengthy periods, the technology landscape can shift to a certain extent which makes it hard to keep constantly jumping for the next update on a regular basis. However, once a studio commits to a specific version of a 3D software for a project, let's just say a 2021 or a 2022 version, there is often a strong incentive to stick with that choice until the project's completion. For example, the Santa Monica Studios started working on the new God of War game in 2013 and finished it around 2018 in a span of 5 years. So I think it is a good idea for them to stick for example with the 2013 version till the production is finished. And I think this is more evident in for example game engines. Imagine you have to change the game engine mid-production. Personally, I don't see this happening. And the same I think can be said about TV shows which can take years to finish. I mean all the seasons. As one artist working in the industry said, a studio will maintain use of a version of Maya way longer than would seem prudent in seasonal episodic CG work. We ended up staying on Maya 2015, I think, with an ancient version of Renderman for three years on one project. Because there were well over a thousand assets all working and tested that way. So it is a lot of labor to open, test, and resave all those assets for no appreciable visual benefit. So generally that sort of thing isn't budgeted for between seasons. Here's the thing. Studios need breaks from jobs or a reason that gives them time to switch or upgrade. One of the practical activities studios engage in during these downtimes is assessing, testing, and potentially upgrading their software. 
including 3D software and their scripts, you know, in-app tools and third-party add-ons and plugins. And as we said, upgrading a software in the middle of a project poses various risks. However, the gap between projects offers a great opportunity. For instance, consider a television show that's been running for several seasons. Each season production cycle is exhaustive, often involving countless hours of modeling, texturing, rigging, animating, rendering, you know, all the good stuff. But once a show concludes, there is generally a hiatus before the next production begins. This hiatus can serve multiple purposes, including developing new scripts or plugins, pre-production planning, and other things. But it also provides an invaluable opportunity for technical upgrades, such as the main 3D package itself. But fighting breaks between shows or projects is just one example. Interestingly enough, and this might not be common, but upgrading to the latest version of a 3D package can be held back by one department or departments that need a certain version. You see, in a VFX studio for example, the production pipeline is a complex orchestra of multiple departments, each specializing in different aspects of the visual effects process, from concept art to modeling, rigging, animation, lighting, simulation, rendering, and so on and each department relies on specific tools and software to execute their tasks efficiently. But some of them intersect, so a change or an adjustment in one department's software can send ripples through the entire pipeline, potentially affecting the workflow of the entire production. Consider for example the relationship between the rigging and animation departments. If riggers create rigs that animators in the animation department don't have a version of the 3D software that can deal with the work of the rigging department, then things are not gonna work very smoothly. Another scenario can be the relationship between the simulation and the rendering departments. Simulation, whether they are fluids, cloth, or smoke, often generate vast amounts of data that are processed and interpreted by rendering software. And if the simulation department relies on a specific version of the software because of its unique simulation algorithms and stuff, then the rendering department must ensure that their tools can read, interpret, and render that simulation data accurately. So this means that nothing works without being perfectly in line with each other. And an upgrade in the rendering software that doesn't support the simulation data can cause problems or even render failure. And this is what VFX studios don't want. As one artist in the industry said, in case of my workplace, which is relatively big, we are still on Houdini 17.5 because of render engine compatibility. The effects department easily switches between 17.5 and the new version when we need to, but for rendering, everything needs to be cached out and Houdini 17.5 compatible. I know the pipeline is being updated for 18.5, just in time for when Houdini 19 is being released, so yes, I'd say we are continuously behind. Now. From a completely different angle, one additional reason why I think studios don't upgrade so fast and why they are constantly behind is because of render farms and other services, which I think don't upgrade to the newest version fast enough. The point is, if you have work to do, you don't want to put yourself in a position where you don't have leverage, maybe I should say where you don't have enough options, especially the options that you need to have. Me personally, I never use the latest version for working on my projects, first of all due to compatibility with third-party add-ons and scripts, because I would say maybe 10-20% to of third-party developers don't upgrade their add-ons and plugins fast enough for the newest and the hottest version. So guys, I hope you found this video useful and informative, if you did, please give it a thumbs up, you can also subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.